Hi, this is Optimization Problems, and we're going to look at a dog who can optimize. And so in this article, and it used to be a video, but they've taken it down, there's a dog named Elvis, which is a Welsh cor corgi. And then his owner, who's a math professor, said that his dog can solve calculus problems. And so the problem is a standard uh, one that is to find the quickest path from a point on shore to a point on a lake. And then when he did all these math calculations, he found out that his dog was within about a foot of the optimal point at that time, according to calculations through calculus. And so we want to look at this dog problem and see how we can figure this one out mathematically. So here's the problem. And what we want to do with this is let's try to mark the text. And because there's a lot of words here, let's make sure that we're answering the question and we have all the information that we do need. Okay, so we want Elvis to minimize his time. And so minimize is a key here, and time is a key here. So we want to minimize his time. And so the ball will be thrown out into the water, and then some other information that we are given is 50 feet down the beach from where the ball is thrown out 20 feet. And by the way, you can run 20 feet per second and swim 5 feet per second. Find the distance from the thrower to where he must jump in to minimize his time. So minimize the time is what we want to do. Okay? And find the distance is what we ultimately want to find. So we want to set up an equation for time. If you know D is equal to RT, dirt, a rate, if you go 5 feet per second and you go for 3 seconds, that's going to be 15 feet that you're going to be going. So that's distance equals rate times time. But what are we trying to optimize? We are trying to optimize time. So if I manipulate this a little bit, I'm going to end up with this equation right here. And so the time is what we want to multi uh, minimize. So here's Elvis, and this is 50 feet, and this is 20 feet. We want to find this x right here, so we're going to call it x. And a couple reasons why we call that one x is because we need to find this dimension or write it in terms of variables. To do that, I could either call this one x or I could call this piece x. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to use 50 minus x to help me find out this side here. So let's figure out what this side is according to Pythagorean theorem. And so I put it down here for you. I just did Pythagorean theorem, and so this missing side is going to be the square root of x squared plus 400. Okay, so now we want to minimize the time. The time he's going to run along the beach here, and then he's going to jump in. Now he's going to swim. So each one of those... Uh, distances has a different rate for what he's doing. Obviously, he can run faster than he can swim. So our primary equation is time is equal to time 1 plus time 2. This is going to be running, and this is going to be swimming. So if I do this, time running is going to be 50 minus x, because that would be my distance, and then my rate for that would be at 20. And then if I go ahead and do the same thing for this piece on this hypotenuse, the length distance is x squared plus 400 all over the rate. I need the rate here, and that would be my 5. So some things here. Are you minimizing the distance or are you minimizing the time? Well, it does tell us to find the time when we minimize uh, find the distance when we minimize this time. So that's what we're doing. So now we go ahead and take the derivative. t prime is equal to, this right here is just, it's the same thing as, this right here is the same thing as this. So when I take the derivative, I'm just going to get negative 1 over 20, because that's just a constant on this piece. This is a full constant, so then that's going to be a derivative of 0. So I just get negative 1 over 20. That isn't so bad from that piece. And then this piece, I have the, square, the derivative of a square root. Up here, I put the derivative of the square root of u is equal to 1 over 2 square root of u times u prime. You should know that. 
So if I have this, I'm going to go, this one-fifth is just a constant multiple that goes along for the ride. Don't do quotient rule here. It's a constant. So I'm going to go 1 over 2 times the square root of the u. And then I need to multiply by u prime. u prime would be 2x. So inside here, this thing right here is my u. And you can associate it with what I'm doing up at the top here. Okay, So that's my derivative. Then we set it equal to 0 and we try to solve. So when I divide both sides by, uh, cancel the 2 on that one fraction, I end up with this. So I have fraction plus fraction is equal to 0. I like to get this one fraction equal to the other, so then I can cross multiply and solve. So I got x over 5 square root of x squared plus 400. Cross multiply, then divide by both sides by 5 and square both sides. And then I can go ahead and solve for my x with this. And so I get 15x squared is equal to 400. Divide both sides by 15. And I'm going to reduce that. And you should be trying to stay one step ahead of me in pausing this but I get the square root plus or minus the square root of 80 over 3. And you can figure out what that answer is. I think it's 5 point something. Put that in your calculator, and let's see if that makes sense. Let's go back and look at our original drawing. Does that make sense? 5.1639 for that value right there. Yeah, it seems to make sense. He should be running a lot more than he's going to be swimming. So then this increment should be about 5 or pretty close to where the thrower ends up. So here's minimizing time with respect to our running, swimming dog. And then this is the x value. Make sure you're answering the question. And then this would be in feet. That's my units. Now, if I minimize the distance, that would be something totally different. I'd have to set up a distance formula. That would be easy. Minus x plus the square root of x squared plus 400. I'm going to venture a guess that it's probably best to minimize its distance would be to just work on that hypotenuse. You can try that if you wish. So there's the problem in its entirety. It seems like a lot, but in actuality it isn't too much, too bad. And these derivatives, oh, these rational expressions, they look like you're going to have a tough time trying to find this derivative of this thing. It's not too bad. Okay, and just take your time and go ahead and solve. Nice. Let me do one more problem for you, minimizing the distance from a point to a curve, and see how that one works. So say, for instance, we want to minimize the distance. Okay, so that's the thing that we're minimizing is the distance from a point to 0 to the curve y equals x squared plus 3. Here is my point to 0. Here is my other point. Oh, I don't know the equation of that point. Well, I do. It's an arbitrary point. x comma x squared plus 3 would be that other point. Make sure you're able to write that. Now, the distance formula that we want to minimize would be the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared all over y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So that is that distance formula. And so that's what we want to minimize. So I have two points. Here's one point. Here's one point. I can put that in for the respective points there. So I just call this one x1, y1. And I call this one x2, y2. Now let's just plug those in. So my distance is going to be equal to the square root of x2. So this would be x minus 2 quantity squared plus... If I go over here, this is my y2, this is my y1, so I subtract those two, x squared plus 3 minus 0 quantity squared. This is the thing that I want to optimize, so I go ahead and take the derivative. So d prime is equal to, remember this derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 square root of u. Well, that's this thing right here that we just had x squared plus 3. I don't need that 0 anymore. But then I need my chain. So when I multiply by the derivative of the inside, here's my u right here. So I need the u prime. So since I have a power, I'm going to use the power rule 
2 times x minus 2 times the chain. Don't forget the chain, but that's just 1. And then this one, I bring out the 2, x squared plus 3. But there I need the chain of the inside from here too, so I need a 2x. So there is my derivative. What do we do with this derivative? Well, we set it equal to 0. When I set it equal to 0, what happens to this denominator? I don't need it anymore because zeros only come from the numerator part. So I never needed that. So I'm going to get 2x minus 4. So I just simplified this. And then this one I can simplify as well plus 4x times x squared plus 3. So then if I, I went through all these steps, simplified, and I came up with this equation right here. Now this is the weird part about this is because in pre-calculus we would just go ahead and graph this thing right here and then find the maximum. Well, or the minimum I should say in this case. But here we aren't using the calculator to do that, but then at the end we have to use the calculator anyways. But I need to see all this calculus work that you're doing with the derivative and sort it out. Now does our answer make sense? If you look over here, 0.27, that would be somewhere in there. So if I draw this line, is that the shortest distance? That sure seems like that would be very reasonable. If I went over here, well, that's a longer distance. Anywhere in here, that seems like a longer distance. So 0.2795 seems to be an appropriate answer for this. Good stuff. Now I'm going to show you a different way to do this, and you can only do this if you're using one single square root, and it might make your life just a little bit easier, but I'm not sure. What if I minimize q rather than this d up here? If I minimize q, I'm going to take and find q prime, 2x minus 2 plus 2x plus 2, uh, x squared plus 3, and then I got to chain off by the 2x. Well, this right here is the same exact thing as what we had over here as our chain. And when we set this equal to 0, this denominator goes away, so all I'm left with is the numerator. That is identical to what we have right here. So you can use this method as long as you have one single solitary square root on the thing that you want to optimize. Now just be careful because when you plug in back x and they ask for the distance, I'm going to have to plug it into this equation, not my q equation that I have over here. Okay, so that is a slight shortcut to what we did before. Now going back up here, can I do that method with this equation? The answer is absolutely not because this has a square root just over part of it. The square root has to be over the whole thing in order to do this little cheaty technique of minimizing what's inside the square root is the same thing as minimizing the square root. And that is for the x value only, not for the y value. All right, so I hope both these examples help you and uh, take care of yourself, figure out some of these other optimization problems. This might be a little bit more difficult than pre-calc, but this is kind of the same setup. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.